Compare and contrast, compare and contrast. That's science! Hey everybody, how you doing? I'm David Geisler, this is the Technophiles Newscast, and last week, two men got launched up into outer space to live there for a year. American astronaut Scott Kelly and Russian cosmonaut Mikhail Kornienko are going to spend 342 days, 250 miles above the Earth to study what happens to a body when it's in space for extended periods of time. Scott Kelly, of course, has been in outer space before, but this time it'll be more than twice as long as he's ever been up there before. And not only will he be the first American in outer space for that long, he's actually got a twin that'll be waiting for him down on Earth. I think this is kind of cool because what NASA's gonna do is, of course, compare and contrast Scott to his brother, who is a retired NASA astronaut as well, and see the differences, what their bodies are like after a year. Twins in space! Actually, only one of them. This whole mission has been designed to take about the same amount of time that it would take to get to Mars. Because it's important to know what happens to things like our physiology, or our immune system, or our microbiome, or cognitive functions. One of the ways that NASA plans to do this is that every time a shuttle goes back and forth from the ISS, Scott will give them blood samples that they can take back down to Earth and compare to his brothers. They also plan to test his hand-eye coordination. They have a couple ideas on how they're going to test his emotions. The whole gamut. Mm -mm. I feel emotional, I'm Scott Kelly. There would be moments in the journey to Mars where complete communication would be cut off with Earth just because of the way, the way the solar system works. If something were to happen with an astronaut's family member or something like that, they wouldn't even know for a while or be able to do anything about it. This is especially poignant for Scott Kelly because actually one of the previous times he was in outer space, his sister-in-law, Gabrielle Gifford, who's a senator, actually got shot and he obviously couldn't do anything about it. He just had to sit up there and wait. Now imagine if that was a whole year, I don't even crazy fall. Of course, this is a microscopic sample size, two guys. So we can't really say that this data is gonna relate to everybody for large space travel. However, this is obviously a tremendous opportunity to make missions to Mars safer. So this is all very exciting, but what makes me and I think everybody else on the crew here even more excited is that Time Magazine is going to be doing an exclusive multimedia documentary on this entire journey. It sounds like they're gonna have articles that follow Scott's journey, little video segments, and at the end of the entire journey they're gonna release a documentary film about it so we just get to follow right along good on you time so I think most people would agree that this mission is pretty cool but what I want to know is how do you guys feel about if you had to live in a space station for a year let me know in the comments down below or tweet us at technophiles pod remember you can always find us on Facebook by searching technophiles or go to our actual website technophilespodcast.com you can also listen to our show the technophiles podcast bi-weekly by going to iTunes and searching technophiles all right guys I'll see you tomorrow Hey guys, hope you liked the video. Remember, uh, you can check out some of our previous episodes here or even subscribe to us down here. I keep, I keep thinking about Scott and Mark and their uh, twin situation. I wonder if they ever parent trapped anybody. I wonder if they're parent trapping NASA right now. It's not cool, guys. <laughs>